just about uh, quarter past 12 on November 1st. Yes, yeah, so I, I checked the calendar. It was November 1st. Not now, but a while ago. It's November 1st already. And uh, doing our first stormy weather ride. It's wet on the ground. It's not raining outside, but uh, there is a bit of a wind. Uh, the issue here is, the, is blowing my bike a little bit to the, to the left. So it's coming from, uh, I'm heading south, so it's coming from the east. So there's an easterly wind. No, it's a, actually from the west. It's a westerly wind. Blowing east, and so it blows me to the left. So the question is how it ends up uh, sounding uh, with the wind. Of course, uh, is ever the case when it's uh, cold and rainy out? Uh, the nose gets to running. So, as I said, it should be an interesting ride. I see Clintus is back to his, uh, he is vlogging again. He goes through the, Clintus goes through these funks every now and again, as do most vloggers, questioning as to whether or not they're doing a good job, or whether or not anyone's watching, or, you know, uh, just basically doubting themselves. Uh, and the thing is, is what happens is that the fans are there because they, they like the person, they like the conversation, and that's how you build the fan base. And, but the thing is, is that with so many other channels out there and so many other options, you're not going to, you're not necessarily going to have a large audience that you did before, uh, because the environment, the the, the landscape, uh, vlogging, and uh, just general TV entertainment is changing. There's podcasts, there's radio, there's a whole bunch of things out there uh, for people to sort of get involved in and to watch. So you're not going to be the only person out there, and, and this, of course, is going to affect your viewing numbers. And the thing is, is if you don't want to, you don't follow the crowd. If you're going to cut your own path, then you're going to cut your own path, and there are going to be ups and there are going to be downs. And you sort of have to account for all this. I appear to be riding much better. I am hitting some of those bumps. I really can't move around too much with the scooter today because the ground is wet. I don't want to take a chance in having the uh, scooter slip from underneath me. The brakes are a little finicky. They are electronically controlled, so they are sort of like a an anti-locking brake mechanism in here. But what happens is, if you tap it the wrong way, uh, what ends up happening is that you end up getting uh, uh, the brake engaged and slowing you down. And that's not always a good thing. Otherwise, things are going well, you know, the, uh, you know, day by day, week by week, and then eventually month by month. They are locking things down again in Toronto for COVID. Uh, I should say the chronic, chronic gas. I still can't understand why, you know. I can't understand why that YouTube and other places don't like the word COVID. Can't say it. It's a bad word. So let's use chronic gas instead. That's where it should be coming in from, from the west. It's 
called call an Alberta clipper. But if you look at the satellite, you're not going to see that. You'll see something completely different. I've got to adjust my helmet when I get to the uh, lights. Assuming, assuming I stop at the lights. Yeah, a little slippery. I can feel my feet, my feet slipping. Otherwise, okay. Part of learning to, to be on the scooter is learning to scoot in various different weather conditions. Uh, now that I'm doing this at the low, lower speeds, so eventually, once I get this under my hat, and, well, this is going to be, I'll do this in the winter and then in the spring. And once that occurs, uh, I should be able to increase the speed move the gearing up to uh, the next level <clears throat> and do above 25 kilometers an hour. But right now I'm doing 25 kilometers an hour and uh, happy with it. The time doesn't really sort of, is, is not necessarily impacted. And the thing is, is with many things, it's not the ride itself that's actually bad terms of the way I feel is the anticipation of the ride of, and the sort of the, the thoughts that come into your mind of what could go wrong. That's anticipation, that's a little bit of fear, uh, and that creates, of course, anxiety. And anxiety could end up, end up uh, putting you in a position where not that anything would have gone wrong, but the anxiety itself knocks you out, makes you too tired, and say, well, I don't want to ride this anymore. This is kind of what happened with Clint this, uh, uh, with his uh, dirt bike. Because he's not riding his dirt bike anymore because, uh, well, he doesn't ride it that much. And when he does ride it, there's a lot of fear and anticipation. Because, of course, you know, on, on, on a bike, things can go wrong. And the injury is because you're not inside a car. You're not caged in. And this is what happened. This is what happened on the Tannerites. Uh, on the Yowie vlogs, is that uh, one of the vehicles they were in, the recreational vehicles, tipped over, but if they were all caged in, so they were more or less okay. They did get banged up, they got some bruises, and they said they didn't feel it, they didn't feel it while they were riding, because all they had the adrenaline pump, and once the adrenaline kicked off and they went to bed, that's when they started to feel it. Smells like laundry day. People doing their laundry. Whoa. Strong gust of wind around the buildings. Produces kind of like a wind tunnel effect. Going any second now. I don't know if you can hear me, but 
we're riding into the wind, so I do have to be loud. <laughs> the fortunate thing is that as you're vlogging on the scooter and you're speaking louder so because of the wind, uh, other people around you as you go by can hear you. Anxious drivers in their horns. Guys going faster than 30 kilometers an hour. Imagine being that anxious. Life must be sheer hell for that person. A lot of people who have high anxiety, who are high anxiety, have high anxiety, they get angry very easy. They have really shitty lives. And you kind of, this is where you kind of feel sorry for them because you're angry all the time. You can't have a happy life. around the building really does affect you. They're very, it creates a wind tunnel effect and uh, as these things building blow in the wind, as the wind comes around you, it's got more uh, power, more of a, uh, uh, more momentum. Uh, and the momentum of the wind because of the higher density uh, has a more significant impact. Now, the only thing I'm concerned about, and this is why I want to look, I'm riding on the wrong side of the road right now, is the yellow line here. Uh, the paint lines are very slippery. There's, there's, uh, there's not much grip on them. And so, you kind of want to, you kind of want to avoid them. Just like a the of large potholes and divots in the road, you want to avoid those. Because there's not a lot of traction. my place. A few minutes away. Make sure there's no other car coming. Avoid that large puddle there. Oops. This is a tricky corner. Puddles. Bad divots in the road. ride home or not, or uh, if it gets too bad, because it's supposed to snow, actually. We have the bad driver, Volkswagen, the Nazi mobile. <laughs> driving who don't know the rules of the road. 
and they don't give you the proper distance. They try to sneak by, they try to skim by, and they think that they think they're in this, this slim little car, but they're not. They have to give the person enough room to go so they can constantly go around. You can't just squeeze by and assume that oh everything's safe, everything's okay. This is why a lot of accidents, particularly very bad accidents, happen right around the corner from the house. It's very simple. Drivers aren't careful. Pretty but dangerous. Get traction issue. 